Hi everybody, my name is Christopher Collison and we're about to embark on part four of the first lecture for the first week of the class Chem 670. Before I jump straight in, um, this lecture is mainly about the elements uh, and the tools for starting to improve our, our writing. Um, at the first slide or two, we'll also be talking about how to um, obtain a project outline for the research that you're going to carry out uh, in your new research group. So without further ado, let's jump into those slides and uh, thanks for listening. So let's talk about project outlines for a second. When you eventually choose the advisor that you're going to work with over the next couple of years, you will want to ask for a project outline and receive a project outline so that you can understand what your project is all about, so that you can understand where to do some literature searching. So you'll ask for an objective, you'll read that objective and write down questions. Remember, every scientist has more and more questions and that's this is also going to lead you into a dialogue that you can have with your advisor so you start to understand more about the project and understand more about where you need to do additional literature review. Don't forget that questions are always good questions, especially when they've come from careful forethought and, and, and associated insights. So think about the project outline that you're receiving and then ask questions and those questions will be good questions. And I think in general, don't ask a question if you're listening, if you're at a seminar, or don't ask a question just because you think it, it, it will look good. Um, try to ask a question um, because you really want to know about the material. So now let's jump back to one of the main goals of this particular course, and that's writing and improving our writing. So one of the first things we have to recognize um, when we are improving our writing skills is we want to write to others as you would want to have others write to you. So put your readers first and be aware that your writing may be very clear to you, but it might be unclear to the reader. Uh, so we're going to work through a number of uh, peer critiques over the course of the semester so that you can start to appreciate when somebody else doesn't understand what you're trying to say. And when we recognize that, then we'll be motivated to improve our own writing technique. But how might we critique the writing of others? If we're going to do it a lot in this course, how would we do that? So let's look at this particular um, statement in here. Given the near certainty of instrumental unreliability in measurements of spectroscopic intensity and the analyte concentrations themselves, the opportunities for accurate determination and quantitative tolerance should result in a broad landscape of student reporting approaches, at least until such time as the experimental complexity of the current laboratory program is unraveled by future historical tracking mechanisms. Okay, what would we think of that if that was put forward in front of us? How would you describe this writing? Think about this for a few seconds. Would you describe it as unclear, difficult, abstract, vague, dense, wordy, convoluted, jargony, or pompous? What advice would you give to the author? You'd probably be pretty upset if you got this and um, you may feel like lashing out a little bit at the author. Um, you might say, keep it simple. You're not being clear enough. But I put it to you that that's also like going to the doctor. Um, it, if you go to the doctor and you're not well and you've hurt your knee and uh, the doctor says, well, you've just got to get better. And that doesn't really help you that much. We want to be told how we can improve. And that's what this course is all about. It's about how we're going to improve our writing. So one idea is always remember to write to others as you would have them write to you. Um, if you don't like reading bad writing, don't write it. Remember that. Put readers first. 
You don't always have to tell readers what they want to hear. You can stick to your own views. You can make sure you communicate your conclusions, but you have to get the communication right. You don't want to get to a point where readers label you as an ineffective presenter or an ineffective writer. So this is a difficult um, reputation to get rid of. These are things that often students start to believe or think about when they receive criticizing, when they receive criticism. Oh, I don't know why Dr. Collison thinks my writing is unclear because it's so clear to me. And you know what? Even if my writing is unclear, I just don't know how to fix it. So, so sometimes this happens. So this is my point now. We have to know how to help other people improve their writing. And this often happens if I'm writing a proposal or a paper with a, another author. We have to work with each other to improve that work so that it has a larger impact. So how do we critique each other's writing? How would we want to receive a criticism? So there are three points of view when we critique. There is the, the you form, where we might say you are unclear, overcomplicated, disorganized, and vague. But many people take this as uh, an attack. So we want to avoid as much as possible the you perspective. A second approach might be um, to use the it perspective. So this report is unclear, overcomplicated, disorganized, and vague. That's the it perspective. Slightly easier to take than the you perspective, but we might still take that it's a little bit of attack because the critiquer is describing our product and we, we, we kind of don't like this um, so much. The preferred approach is to use the I perspective. Um, this basically says when I'm writing this for the author, when I'm giving feedback, I'm saying I had a hard time understanding this report, but we have to, if we want to be improved writers, if we want to um, get better as writing, we have to take that criticism and recognize that when someone says to me, I had a hard time understanding this report, that means I have to do something about it. So that's the me perspective. Uh, and most find this to be the easiest criticism to take. How do we fix this prose? Well, now we start to think about how to actually improve our writing. Um, so we need certain vocabulary that we're going to use in our critiques. And this vocabulary um, that we're going to use is going to point to certain words on the page uh, that causes us difficulties. And this vocabulary can basically be described as, for example, the subject, the verb, might be the object or the noun. Uh, we might talk about active voice or passive voice. We're going to use the phrases, independent clauses, subordinate clauses, clauses and prepositions. So these are the kind of vocabulary words that we're going to use as we help each other improve our writing. We're going to actually jump straight to uh, the subject because every sentence is going to start with the subject. And we're going to talk about characters, first of all. Later, we're going to talk about the verb because a subject always does something. A, a subject has a verb associated with it. And we're going to talk about actions as those verbs. But, but first today, let's talk about characters. What's our goal? We want to write with perceptible, consistent, and important subjects. We want those subjects to be retained by the reader. We want the reader to focus on those most important actors or characters in your prose. We also want to express our actions in very specific verbs, not vague verbs, but very specific actions. When this happens, the readers will understand and they will stay focused on the most important actions and you know that they will recognize your writing to be clear. And we will also talk um, in an upcoming lecture about something called the eight word test. And this is about making sure we don't have so many words that a reader has to retain before they get to the subject of the sentence. So let's have a look at these.
Let's look at an example here. Um, in the panel at the top, we have a statement. And let's think about what we do and don't like about this statement. Measurement, quantification, analysis are the highlights of experimental courses from RIT. Remembrance of your chemistry and developing skill sets are enhanced by our customized procedures. Well, thankfully, uh, nobody has written that and published it other than me for this course because I'm not a particular fan of the way this is written. But let's think about why it's problematic. Principles of clarity. So readers would think sentences are clear and memorable when subjects are short, specific and concrete. And important actions are expressed not in nouns, but in verbs. So what we might say is if we look at this statement, measurement, quantification and analysis, these are all nouns. We're not saying we measure uh, at RIT. We're not saying we quantify or we analyze. We're instead putting these verbs into these nouns and that makes it hard for a reader to understand. We also don't say here when you uh, remember your chemistry or I remember chemistry, what we're saying is indeed here we're adding a verb, we're turning it into an abstract noun and this makes it very hard to understand. So these are um, we, we, we want to make sure that we're using appropriate verbs. Um, and another thing here um, is that we want to make sure our subject is um, well recognized. Indeed, the subject of this particular sentence is measurement, quantification and analysis. And those particular nouns are not going to be so memorable when we think about a subject. So how can we choose better subjects that start our paragraphs and start our sentences? What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the character scale. And the higher up the character is on this scale, then the more clear and the more memorable uh, that subject will be as the reader re goes through your work. And if you think back to uh, when you were comparing two summary paragraphs, I put it to you that most of the time it was easier to read the second uh, paragraph because um, the characters were a little easier to understand and there was some flow. We'll come to flow later. So successful characters are easy for audience members to visualize or picture in their minds. So here is the character scale. People come first. John, your sister, Barack Obama. We tend to to remember people and if people are the subjects we are going to find those sentences easy to take on. Everyday roles comes next so we might think about the teacher did this or the postman did this. All right, we remember those roles they're easy for us to understand. Things this page this PowerPoint presentation the room you're in the beaker that you're using so things are next on the list followed by organizations, um, the IRS, RIT. Notice these are all acronyms, so be careful of using acronyms. Rochester Institute of Technology, the School of Chemistry and Materials Science. Uh, these are all organizations, a little more abstract now compared to John or your sister. Next down the list, we have everyday processes and concepts, driving, eating, studying, Eating is a pleasure for me. Studying becomes quite difficult for me. So these uh, processes can be used as subjects, but they're further down the scale. Next, when we have specialized objects or processes, these become even harder to understand. This might happen in a chemistry class. Uh, we might be talking about atomic absorption spectrometry or a size exclusion, gel permeation, chromatography, uh, or a value chain maybe in, in business. But these specialized objects and processes start to become really difficult to understand. Finally, specialized concepts, uh, a calibration curve for concentration absorption, parallax error calculation 
can you imagine if I started a sentence with this? I think I'd lose everybody um, in the audience. So higher up the list is better. Try to start your sentences always with characters that are higher up this list. I'm going to stop at this point. We'll talk about verbs and actions and the eight word test in a subsequent lecture next week. Um, so for now, let's look at my courses. You will find descriptions of all the upcoming homework. Um, writing will be part of this, um, but I'm going to stop there and say thank you very much for listening.